Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad. Today we've got a show that involves your favorite two people on the show, me and Jasper, and that's it. So it's going to be a duo act, and we are going to go over a bunch of stuff, some really relevant stuff. So first, Jasper has a few announcements that he wants to make. After that, he's going to jump in to a story that will hopefully give you guys not only some entertainment, but some good insights into the hosting game. And finally, we're going to discuss a bunch of issues from the Airbnb Academy Facebook group. Now, this is a private group that is available to people who purchase our book, Get Paid for Your Pad, and that comes with a complimentary membership. Uh, Otherwise, it is a closed group, but it's an awesome forum for Airbnb hosts from all over the world to share their issues and questions with other Airbnb hosts, as well as Jasper and I. And we often jump into the dialogue and help people sort through their issues so that they can optimize their listings. But before we get to that, we are going to start with Jasper's announcements. Hey, everybody. My house it going? I just wanted to list the different places where you can find our content right now because i realized we've we've been doing a lot in the last month or so and you know i I feel like it's kind of confusing for people maybe so i just want to to sort of lay it out for you guys so first of all our book get paid for your pad is on sale as a kindle version on amazon so you can read it on your kindle your ipad your iphone and it's on sale for $9.97. It does come with a free audiobook as well. So that's pretty cool. You can just go to Amazon and search for Get Paid for Your Pad and you will find it. And the other thing you can do is you can go to www.getpaidforyourpad.com slash podcast and you'll find a link to the book as well there. Now, we also have a PDF version of the book, which you can buy at www.optimizeyourairbnblisting.com. And the PDF comes with three bonuses. One of them was just mentioned by Josefa. It's the membership to the Airbnb Academy Facebook group. The second bonus is the guidebook that I send out to my guests, or more a template for you guys to use to create your own guidebook based on what I created. And the third thing is you'll get access to some live events that we'll be organizing soon where you get to ask questions about Airbnb hosting and you can just chat to us. Now, last but not least, I also wanted to mention that we do have a YouTube channel. You can find it if you search for Get Paid for Your Pad on YouTube and you'll find some really fun videos with some quick tips on how to improve your listing. So go ahead and check that out and let us know what you think. And that was it. Awesome. And those were the announcements. But now we're going to step into a little bit more of a fun portion of the show. Jasper, back to you for your fun story. Right. So I was in the US a few weeks ago on a bus from Austin to Dallas. And, you know, even though you're trying to be a really good Airbnb host and you're trying to make sure your guests have everything they need, sometimes something happens and you just can't really do anything about it. And this was, this was sort of one of these situations. So I was in the bus and suddenly my, uh, my WhatsApp, I got a notification that one of my, my guests was sending me a message. And let me just kind of read to you how our conversation went. So she says, this is Simona from your apartment. I say, hi. She says, there is a mouse in the house. It's a very urgent problem. Can you send somebody here? 
So I'm I'm thinking, oh my god, like what what am I supposed to do about a mouse in my house? I mean, <laughs> there's not much I can do about it. Um, in Amsterdam, it's very common for for mice to crawl into the houses as the houses are like a hundred years old, and the little burgers they always find a way to get in. So I wasn't sure what to do about it. I got in touch with my cleaning lady, and I informed her and asked her if she maybe could go to the house and calm this lady down because she seemed really upset. She, um, she The conversation continues, and she goes, what should we do now? Is it still safe to sleep in the house? Which, which, is, which I found kind of funny because, you know, unless it's a giant, and uh, a giant mouse with, with mega teeth. <laughs> I don't think it's too dangerous to sleep in a house if there's a mouse. But anyway, um, she, uh, I told her that my cleaning lady was going to come over. And th that seemed to calm her down a little bit. She said, we'll wait for her. And then she told me it's behind the fridge. And then she, uh, she asked me, how did it get in? We paid attention... No windows were open, no doors were open. And then again, she goes, is it safe to sleep here tonight? So my cleaning lady went over and she tried to calm her down. She, she was pretty panicked. And the funny thing was her husband was also there, but apparently he was just sitting on the couch reading a book and the whole thing just kind of just passed him, I, I guess. He wasn't really worried about it. But in the end, um, my cleaning lady managed to calm her down. She she pretended to chase the, the mouse out of the house. I think uh, I was already gone, I think. And, and um, my guest ended up staying, even though on, on the WhatsApp she, she asked if, if, she could, uh, if she could maybe stay somewhere else. But I just thought it was a pretty funny story. And... You know, sometimes just something happens, and you just don't not really sure what to do about it. I can't, I can't really. It was it was in the evening, at like nine or ten p.m. So I can't really call like the mouse extinguisher service or something like that to come to my house and kill the mouse. Now, have you had any other? Have you ever had another host or sorry, another renter mention this? Mention this infamous mouse. I actually did have a few guests who saw it before. Because like I said, it's really, really hard in Amsterdam to keep them out. As soon as you leave any food in the house, I also have the garbage bin outside for this reason. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have like mouse poison like in, in different places. And I always tell my guests to not, you know, not leave any food outside and stuff. But uh, it's just really, really hard to, to prevent them from coming in. So I did, uh, I did have some guests noticing uh, a, a mouse sometimes. But most guests don't really make a problem out of it, I guess. And I believe in your guidebook, I mean, you mentioned something about the mice. Like you disclosed yeah. that, hey, listen, this is, this is a problem here in, in this city. And if you keep your food away, it's, it, you're, you're going to be okay, right? Yeah, exactly. I I tell my guests to be very careful with the with the food and keep the doors and windows closed at night. Well, unless unless you don't mind having a mouse. I mean, when you grow up in Holland, it's it's kind of one of these things that it just happens a lot of the time. So it doesn't really it doesn't really bother a lot of people. I guess I am I'm I'm not really bothered by it too much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I know that uh, a lot of people don't really like having a mouse around. But yeah, some some guests didn't notice it, but they didn't make a big deal out of it. All right, thanks for the thanks for the mouse story. Awesome, <laughs> and then uh, he still got a good review. She still stayed. Everything was was totally fine at the end of the day. Well, yeah, I didn't get a review yet. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm thinking. She's probably not going to leave one. Ah, okay. That's my expectation. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, and we'll keep you guys posted on that post-mouse review. Now <laughs> we are going to step into 
our, our topics of discussion from the Facebook group, Airbnb Academy. Uh, and first, I want to even bring up a topic that we were discussing actually just last night over a beer with a couple of my buddies. And I'll definitely let Jasper weigh in. I thought it was a really interesting interesting question. So I have a buddy named Mike, and I went to law school with him. He he was a practicing attorney in New York for about four years. He actually recently moved to Los Angeles. He's a great guy. And he was living in a really nice building in House Kitchen area of Manhattan. Really great building. He bought the condo. It was, very, it was actually newly built when he bought it, which is rare to find in Manhattan. And it was a one-bedroom and he began renting it out on Airbnb, right? Because he was spending a lot of time in DC and elsewhere. And he was making a lot of money. And he was making, uh, well, at a minimum, when he was getting people in, at a long term, he was making over $5,000 a month. So he was, he was really raking it in. And it was more than covering his mortgage payment. It was covering it and also giving him extra cash. Well, like as I said, he lived in a condo building. So, of course, when there's a con, uh, condominium, there's a condominium association. The homeowners there have certain rules and regulations about what is kosher and what is not as far as what you can do with your apartment. Now, in his particular building, and this is not uncommon, of course, but in his particular building, there was a rule against having short-stay renters. Okay, so essentially, renting out an Airbnb was was not allowed. And if you did it, you'd face some dire consequences. Now, he did it anyways. And again, we don't recommend this. We don't recommend uh, doing it surreptitiously because it can all open you up to all sorts of uh, legal issues. Now, in his case, the general counsel of the condo association wrote him a letter threatening to fine him $500 a day, reporting him to the city, all, the, all these other terrible things that, of course, nobody wants to deal with. So that's why we don't recommend doing that. But this prompted an interesting question because there, again, are a lot of buildings that are straight away opposed to short-stay rentals. Now, I had another friend of mine who was out with us, and he immediately said, well, you know what? I think that's great that the building out bans it because if I lived in a condo building, I wouldn't want other people renting out to short stay guests because it increased liability. They may mess up the halls. They may steal stuff from your apartment, all these, all these negative things. Now, I kind of chuckled because this is exactly the same type of fears that people have when thinking about renting out an Airbnb themselves. They, a lot of times they don't do it because of these fears. And if you're a regular listener to our show, you realize that all these fears are unfounded completely and utterly. In fact, what people find is the opposite tends to be true, that when you do take in these guests, especially through Airbnb because you have all these verification processes in place, that it not only ends up being risk-free, but it ends up being a pleasant experience. Now, that being said, there's always some risk there bringing anybody, whether it's a fixed-term renter or short-stay renter. But the bottom line is, if you look at it empirically, it's been highly pleasant. So we were chatting about it, and the, the issue is that even if you look at the data and you say, hey, everything is uh, above board, these renters are coming in and they're causing no disruption, the problem is that for other renters in the building, for, I'm sorry, for other owners in the building, why should they allow it? They get no benefit, not, nor does the condo association. So the, even if it's just a small, small, minimal amount of risk that they're taking on, why take it on if you're getting no benefit? So we wanted to talk today briefly about how you can make it, how you can incentivize condo buildings as opposed to just forcing them to doing it or, or, or doing it behind their back. How can you incentivize them in an economic way? to want to actually allow short-stay rentals, to make it a win-win situation. So Jasper, we, I just thought it was, I mean, Jasper knows both the guys that we were chatting with. And first off, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, you know, I see the point of, of the, other, the other people that live in the building, because like you said, there's nothing, there's nothing in there for them. And um, they, there should be a way to, to make them benefit by maybe contributing a percentage of the income that you make of your listing to the to the condo association so they can use those funds to make improvements to the common areas like the swimming pool or the, the hallway or or the, throw like a like a party sometime or 
or whatsoever. I think that would be a pretty good solution. Yeah, I completely agree. And at the end of the day, people aren't going to do something for nothing, even if it's a, even if it's a small thing. I mean, they're going to naturally be opposed to it. I mean, I wouldn't really care, I suppose, but I'd rather if you want people to be on board as opposed to allowing it to go, you want to incentivize them. Now, the question then becomes, okay, well, how much do you pay? Do you give 50%? No, because that'll probably disincentivize the people from actually doing it. Maybe you give 25%? Mm-hmm. Maybe we're getting closer. So that will be a dance and a discussion that needs to happen as far as finding that sweet spot where the renters yeah. still, where the, where the owners still want to rent and, and the condo association is somewhat happy. Exactly. And, you know, this, this topic, we can take it a little broader and, and just think about landlords. Like, if you're renting one apartment, then your landlord might not be happy with you renting out an Airbnb. And, and I was actually discussing this with a friend of mine who lives in Buenos Aires. And what he does, he actually, he actually approaches landlords with the suggestion that he helps them uh, rent it out an Airbnb. So instead of saying, hey, I want to I rent your apartment, he says, listen, I'm, I will rent your apartment. I'll pay you whatever you charge for it. And I'm going to rent it out on Airbnb. He, he lets them know up front. And he says that most of the people initially don't like the idea. But here's something interesting. Because people tend to think that Airbnb guests will treat your apartment badly. Which is, which is, which is really not true. Airbnb travelers are actually, are very respectful. I mean, you know, some, sometimes things happen, of course, but most of the time they, they treat your apartment very nicely. And they probably don't use it as much as somebody would who lives there full time. You know, they'll probably eat out. They won't use the kitchen a lot. They'll probably be out of the apartment most of the time anyway. You know, visiting when you're visiting you want to see the highlights and everything so you're probably only using it uh, to to sleep and the second thing is if you're running out an airbnb it's your it's in your best interest to have to maintain your apartment really well and to make improvements to your apartments because that's where that will improve your your airbnb business so i've made a lot of improvements to my apartment my apartment is nicer now than it was when I used to live there because I want to make it really nice for my guests. And, you know, the standards I set for my guests are higher than the standards I set for myself. Does that make, does that make any sense? Does that yeah, no, that's a great point. Exactly. I mean, there are, there are all these different side and fringe benefits of, of letting people into your home and renting out an Airbnb. So, I mean, the point is, is that, I mean, we understand to an extent the resistance, right? Like, again, we have friends who are sort of on the same boat, on the same page. But at the end of the day, I think that these positions, these steadfast positions that sort of, that, that, that sort of rail against the, the short stay rental system usually come from a place of ignorance. And maybe that's not always true, but by and large. So, I mean, that, that what we would love to see is a discussion as opposed to fighting a discussion happen between these condo associations or the powers that be and the people who want to rent out an Airbnb and take a real look at the pros and cons and how everybody can win. Because there's mm-hmm. money, there's money on the table to be made. Why not make it and share the wealth? Yeah, absolutely. And I think in the future, once people get used more to Airbnb, you know, I think people will be less negative about it in the, in the initially because you know whenever something new arrives in on this planet it's always it, it takes a while before people get used to it and you know the, the unknown is often something that people fear so i yeah i also understand where where the worries come from um i wanted to share one thing that i noticed in the airbnb academy facebook group one of our members created a facebook page for his listing and he asked is this a good idea and it's interesting because i never i never really thought about creating a facebook page for for my apartment so i started thinking what can you do with that and is there a benefit now i don't think 
you can really use it to promote your apartment too much unless you want to so you want to run some facebook ads or something i don't think that's going to be very profitable or i wouldn't really recommend it but but i thought it is a good idea to keep in touch with your former guests like when your guests check out you can say hey i have a facebook page for my for my apartment um if you if you'd like to be in touch uh you know if you just like our like the page and uh, that will might just increase the chance that those guests will come back or they may recommend your place to others as you sort of keep on their radar and the other thing i thought about it's also it could also be a way to share some more information about your place in your neighborhood like on a facebook page you can you can post pictures you can post videos you can post all sorts of information about your apartment about the neighborhood and give people a little bit more insight into your your apartment and your neighborhood and and i think that's actually really cool because when you go on a trip half of the fun is looking forward to it looking at the place where where you're going to be looking at the highlights and sort of like uh imagining what you're going to do and what the experience is going to be like that's half of the fun of the trip so i just wanted to share that with you guys now one more thing that we are going to go over is a very very recent actually just a three hour old post on airbnb academy one of our members raised a great question and i'm going to share it with you guys now okay so this is from aaron and he says Please tell me that I'm not the only one that doesn't feel free to leave negative feedback, even though the new review system is double blind. The most recent set of guests, while they were clean and mostly observed the house rules, were loud while talking and closed doors pretty hard, even though our toddler was sleeping right across the hall from them. So Aaron, by the way, is a former guest, and he has a a young daughter in their house, in their baby-proofed house. Okay. All right. Anyway, so then he says... Of course, like good hosts, we spoke to them about it first, but it continued. What do you guys think? Do you ever leave less than stellar feedback for your guests? So this is a great question because in his opinion, he honestly was not pleased. And this can happen sometimes. It doesn't sound like a horrific experience. We have a young daughter and somebody making noise. So what do you do? Jasper, let me turn it over to you as the expert. So this... I've never really had a, a guest who didn't behave. I've never really had a reason to leave a, a negative review for anyone. But it's kind of it's different for me because I rent out my my full house, so I'm never sharing with my guests. I guess when you're sharing a room, or you know, I think Aaron is renting out two rooms, so I believe he actually had another guest in the house as well. So that changes the situation. Now you're you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to deal with with uh, with your guests walking around the house, and, and you know people have different values and different cultures are different, and all that kind of stuff. So, well, first of all, let me say that I think it's really important when you're sharing a house with somebody that you let them know up front what is allowed and what is not and how you expect your guests to to behave i think that's really important and i know aaron has a a very young young baby and obviously the baby needs to sleep sometimes so i would definitely include that maybe in the description so to let the future guests know hey if you're if you're going to stay at my place you know we have to be a little bit quiet because of our baby yeah so that's the first thing i would do i would let them know set the expectations right Mm -hmm. you know my thought is of course and it sounds like he did he chatted with them maybe he could he definitely could have could have set those expectations perhaps a little bit earlier and then my thought is if you have talked to them and they've continued to sort of go down that path of being loud and it's really disturbing you that's what the feedback system is there for. And in particular, if you're worrying about them lashing out back at you, again, Aaron mentioned the double blind review system. So what Airbnb has recently instituted is a double blind feedback policy. So what that means is you have 14 days to leave a review. Both sides do. Now, 
Once the date, that timeline expires, you can't write anything. If you write a review before the 14 days expires and the other side hasn't left a review, for example, if Aaron leaves a review and the other side hasn't left a review yet within that window, neither side can see each other what's going on. So they can't actually read his review. They can only read a review, read his review once they've written their own review and submitted it. Then both reviews are open. The point is, is that if Aaron's worried that, hey, I'm going to leave them some negative feedback, they're not going to say, okay, well, in retribution, we're just going to leave you a really bad and unfair one. That's not going to happen. So I would say go ahead and and be honest. At the same time, talking loud, even though it's disruptive, I wouldn't slam them so hard. I would give some, them something realistic, something that's re- reasonably representative of, of how it affected you. So maybe to me, that might be four stars instead of five stars in a particular category. And as far as explaining exactly what, I mean, unless it was a really bad problem, as far as tearing them down or explaining why, my personal opinion is I don't really see the point of doing that. Uh, you are there to inform other hosts. Maybe as far as the loudness, I would send them a private message so that nobody else has to see what exactly is going on. And you don't uh, insult them out in the open. And that way you do the job of giving good feedback, informing people, and also telling them what they can change. Yeah, you, you don't have to be harsh in the review. One of our members responded to, uh, to Aaron, and I liked her answer. She said, it might be worth mentioning, but you could do it in a euphemistic way. So, so she, her suggestion would be to say something like, they were lively and high-spirited. I thought that was a very uh, uh, elegant way to, uh, to solve this problem. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's right. And she also mentioned right the the private info for Airbnb, uh, or sorry, exactly. the, yeah. So that's that's another uh, great suggestion. But the, the the important point here is that because of the double blind system, you don't have to worry about the other person sort of taking revenge on you. So it, I think it definitely makes the review system uh, more more honest. And um, so yeah, definitely. If if my guests would misbehave. I would definitely mention that in the review. I agree with Zefa, that's what the review system is for. And also, when when guests don't behave the way you expect them to, the first thing to do is always to let them know. And uh, if it, if the behavior doesn't change, and that seems like this this was the case in uh, in Aaron's case, then yeah, let's go ahead and be honest about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, guys, that is all the time we have today for all these great topics. If you guys want to learn more about renting out your place on Airbnb and how to be a super host, you can go to our website to check out our book at www.getpaidforyourpad.com. You can also check out our book on Amazon Kindle. Just go to Amazon and search for the same name of this podcast, Get Paid for Your Pad. If you want more information on today's shows, you can check out our show notes at getpaidforyourpad.com forward slash podcast. And with that, we are wrapping the show. Thanks for joining us. You can check out more episodes every Monday and Thursday. Okay, new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Thanks, guys, and take care. Bye, guys. Get paid for your pad. 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 Get paid for your pad.